So welcome back, everyone. Now that we kind of understand the basics of what a blockchain is, let's see how to use it for its first application, namely building a cryptocurrency. So just a quick review of what we saw in the last segment. Um, as I told you, a blockchain basically is a sequence of transactions. So here you see, you know, uh, one transaction followed by another transaction all the way um, from the beginning of time, all the way uh, indefinitely. Uh, and these transactions are actually partitioned into blocks where each block um, is published as a, as a whole onto the blockchain. And then that publishes all the transactions in the, in the block onto the blockchain. The properties we said that blockchains have is uh, basically the persistence property, which means that once a transaction is written to the blockchain, it can never be removed. Um, and the consensus property, which basically says everybody's, everybody agrees on the current set of transactions that are written to the blockchain. Yeah, the only exception, as we said, is maybe the last few transactions uh, there's still a disagreement on, but that converges after a while so that eventually everybody agrees which transaction should be on the blockchain and which transaction should not. So to implement a cryptocurrency using a blockchain, we understand we need to understand an important ingredient called a digital signature. So let me briefly explain what a digital signature is. So a digital signature is made up of uh, three uh, steps. Okay. So the first step is generating a, what's called a key pair. So there's a public key and a secret key. Uh, all, both of those are very short. They're only 32 bytes. Uh, the public key is going to be published to the whole world. And the secret key is going to be kept secret so that only the person who needs to sign messages knows what the secret key is. Okay, so step number one is generate a key pair. Step number two is that anyone who has the secret key can actually sign arbitrary messages using that secret key. And when you sign a message, the result of that is what we call a signature. But the signature itself is also just a 64-byte string. It's not an actual physical signature. All it is is just uh, a sequence of 64 bytes that we call a signature by the signer on the message that was just signed. Once the signature is generated, anyone who has the public key can actually verify the signatures. In particular, um, there's a verify algorithm that takes the public key, the message, and the signature. And then the verify algorithm either says accept or reject. Yeah, decides whether the signature is valid or invalid. And again, the point is that only someone who has a secret key can sign a message that will then be accepted as valid by this verification algorithm. Okay, so uh, there are lots of digital signatures out there. The most common ones that are used in the cryptocurrency space are called ECDSA signatures, Schnorr signatures, and uh, BLS signatures. And again, I want to emphasize that uh, as long as you hold the secret key, you are the only one who can sign messages uh, using that secret key. If someone else tries to sign messages on your behalf and they don't have your secret key, they can't generate a signature that will be accepted as valid by the verification algorithm. Okay, So using this digital signature, um, then that allows us to implement the currency. And again, you can think of a digital signature as the real world analog where you can sign a document. And then once you've signed it, anyone in the world can verify that you are actually the one who signed that document. Okay. So let's see how we use a digital signature to implement the currency. So the first thing we need to understand is how accounts are represented. So to be paid in Bitcoins, what we're going to do is we're going to generate, uh, as I said, a public, a public private uh, key pair for a digital signature scheme. So that I would do like on my own machine, I'll generate a public key and a secret key. That public key is going to correspond to a, what's called a Bitcoin address. So what is the Bitcoin address? Well, basically what I do is I take my public key and I hash it so that the address itself becomes like 32 uh, bytes of data. Okay, so the, remember, remember, remember what a hash function is. It allows us to take arbitrary data and compress it into 32 bytes. In this case, we're just taking the public key and generating um, a hash value from it. Okay, good. So that's going to be our address. Um, and in fact, you can easily do this on your own machine. I kind of encourage you, this is kind of a fun thing to try on your own. Go to this um, uh, address, bitaddress.org. This is a private, this is a Bitcoin um, public private key generator that runs in your own browser. Okay, so you go to this address, you get some JavaScript into your browser, you hit uh, run, and it will go ahead and generate um, uh, the secret key for you and the public key. Okay, so the secret key you're going to keep for yourself. This is something that you can print out and keep on a piece of paper for your, for your own. And then this is the public key that you can give to the rest of the world so that they can send you funds to that address. 
Okay, so uh, once you encode uh, the hash of the public key as printable characters, basically sort of restricted base 64, you end up with a 34 byte address. You can tell anyone in the world that this is your address. They can then send you funds. And you, the only way you can spend those funds is by signing a transaction that authorizes the expenditure of funds from that address. And to sign those, those um, authorizations, you need to have the secret key, which is uh, kind of also represented over here. An interesting thing is uh, you can store these as QR codes. These are the QR codes. Um, so that you can easily put it in front of a camera and a computer can actually read uh, those character strings in. You don't have to actually type in these character strings when you want to use them. So literally you go to this address, you generate the public and private key pair. You keep the private key you know, to yourself, to yourself in your safe or elsewhere. Um, the public key you tell the whole world and now they can start sending funds to you. Okay, good. And as I said, as we said before, the secret key is in fact needed to spend funds from uh, the address that you just created. So that's it. That's all a Bitcoin address is. It's trivial to create uh, addresses that people can send you funds to.